Hola, ¿qué tal? Buenos días. Good morning. And welcome you all. We're we're trying to settle. We have some issues to deal with. We like to well, these are, you know, all the technical issues are things that usually happen. We'll be able to deal with them as we move along. Well, I'm here to, well, I am in the RAM program. I'm the associate director of the RAM program. Why RAM? Talking about pests and diseases. Well, I will just take a few minutes to explain that based on a uh, program review, this program that uh, started in 2010, so we're eight years old now, this, um, one of the members had this idea, this was the concern of resistant weeds. Currently, we have over 30 resistant weeds, I mean, declared resistant weeds and different active principles. And we see that, um, and they will provide good information that based on um, biology and similarities of the different species that live in nature, will have the same issue with pests and diseases. So in the RAM program, we're trying to use the know-how we have acquired along the years in order to deal with this issue, which is a significant issue. And we believe we will achieve, uh, I mean, we'll have the same kind of issue. Well, basically, I'd like to thank you, and then we're going to be open to uh, a Q&A session. I'd like to thank Aperseed for inviting us here. We know what Aperseed means. Um, it, I feel a little uncomfortable because I get reminded of someone I didn't like very much. But here I'm to I'm here to talk about pests. Where are we heading in terms of pests? And and how do we guess? Well, what kind of um, you know, fortune tellers are we? Because fortune telling regarding pests is quite complicated. You know what's going to happen in the season, and then pests do whatever they want, whenever they want. I mean, no one has been able to predict that Epidactylus would disappear in the soy crops, and they are quite popular. And, you know, we have to um, really tell whether we are serious fortune tellers or not. What we can predict, though, because this is coming, and this is unstoppable, is the resistance, the issue of resistance. I mean, the bottleneck issue, uh, Oruga Cogogera, um, you know, when we were asked what we were seeing, how we would predict this, and this has to do with management. I mean, fortunately, Argentina has begun to work hard. I mean, we have this, uh, the Committee of Resistance of uh, um, Weeds, and these are the first, um, you know, guidelines to attack this pest, Spododera uh, frung. Fungiperda. And, and not only the loss in terms of yield, for example, this worm um, has this uh, other problem. You know, they, they damage the, the corn. And this is, um, you know, oftentimes uh, uh, corn is not monitored because it's very difficult. I mean, we would need uh, a lot of people to do this to check and monitor corns. I mean, no one just walks around and monitors uh, cor corn in order to find, uh, you know, this pest. 
but technology in a way is helping us. But if technology has a problem, then it's a serious problem. So uh, resistant management is a big issue, not only because of the direct damage, but also indirect damage. And this is the diseases in the corn. And this has already been seen. I mean, we, we see this damage when there are mycotoxins in the corn, depending on the destination of the corn. So this problem or this issue has um, been considered for some time now. And this uh, will, I mean, this has to do with all of the different per pests. I mean, we are moving towards resistance of pests and insecticides and transgenic our products uh, insecticides today, so we haven't worked much. At, um, I mean, country-wise, if we have, want to know about the dosage, whether we need more dosage or not, we don't have this information, this lab data. But well, in the 80s, um, you know, we used a specific dose, and now we need to higher to to use a higher dose. So we have to see how we manage our new technology. For example, in soy, when this worm appeared, this worm has always been present, but it's kind of latent. And it's one of, well, it's the only worm we know. Um, if you say intact soy, well, so the, the this could be expected. I mean, I cannot say that, uh, we, we, we cannot predict this um, new worm. So the, but new things will arise, that is for certain. And this interaction, for example, happened in the north of Cordoba. We were expecting this worm, but this is parasite. I mean, uh, it's, it has a virus, so it's a pest that appeared, and um, not many controls were made. It, um, because it's been naturally controlled, but this is surprising because we have these bed bugs, for example, but because we don't have any cultural changes. These bed bugs, well, we have to reconsider the bed bug management. And I mean, um, how, when to apply, it's, it's, it's not reconsidering management. Uh, how, I mean, how to plan monitoring, how to manage information I mean, health information in order to manage that information later. Fortunately, these pests have different controllers. For example, this is found across the country. This picture was taken in Santiago del Estero province. There are many controllers like this, for example, uh, Hymenopterus. So when these fail, pests, um, so we have to see the system we're at. I mean, bed bugs have been growing now. And this is seen in um, seeds. Julian Garcia gave me this information in a seed lab in Rio Cuarto. And every year, well, they, they, they studied the different seeds. And this was done up to 2016. He has data on 2017 uh, and 18. And in 2012, he found an increase regarding the damage of bed bugs. In green, you can see these will be all of the samples that have uh, damage. And then what is in red is the severity of the damage. And since 2010, the severity of damage has been increasing. And this has uh, been uh, unnoticed. If we speak to any uh, farmer, for example, they don't find, they don't uh, perceive a, a loss regarding the yield. And since this is not seen in the farm, then it is not uh, studied. But if we have a look at this lab information, we can develop a management strategies and, uh, and how to prevent um, um, errors. And do we, can we not stumble with the same stone twice? For example, in worms, can we manage without worms in soybean without seeing any damage is quite difficult. What do we do? I mean, I am called um, as if I were the responsible, if, uh, responsible for everything. And I say, what can I do? There's no pests. I mean, there's no worms. And this uh, bug 
trips. And when you see the history, it's quite surprising. In 1969, we saw this in Cotton, this uh, a trip affecting soy. Quintanilla also mentions this in 1980. And then in 1996, Inter talks about how it has impacted soy crops. And in 2005, Gamundi assessed the incidence of the trip. I mean, uh, 10 years have gone by. And in Sebastián Elcano, in 2007, we did some tests. In 20, 2009, uh, 2010, Frana from Inta also assessed the damage and loss due to trips. Uh, Perotti also in 2011, and this year we have assessed uh, losses of 10. Um, you know, it was it was basically a sea of trips. So what is, what are we doing? You know, why? Because we're making the same mistake and we're not seeing something. These are some witnesses on the different treatments, and this is, uh, you know, it's a pest that actually damage damages um, the crop and uh, it has to do with drought and this is where we saw worst yields you know for example when we compare that in drought periods so the yield was very low for the farmer with very um, but we saw this in all of the different tests uh, the what it was treated or not treated to see that the witness and the treatment has uh, is, is different. It has a, a visual difference. And when we, you know, review all of the different uh, publications, the different articles, this is the, the control group, um, and the treatments are above, um, I mean, in terms of yield. So how is, what is it? I mean, why? Because we are quite accustomed of to, to having just one single pest. We are accustomed to seeing damage rather than studying damage. That is, um, so when we see, I know this is uh, this is quite controversial, but um, these are the different register products. So you can see register products for trips and their costs. Uh, those registered at Senasa, but if I, 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 I value, or I assess the yield, we can see the difference uh, between the bars. So when I can, what I can lose in terms of dollars is the shows the significance. That's why we have to be careful about the um, financial um, damage threshold. Because here we justify three applications, even 30 applications, 15 applications. If we apply, if we make 10 applications, there's a mismanagement of the system. So we have to be very careful between this damage price ratio. So I have to integrate concepts much better. So if I see the concern, and where are we heading in terms of health management, plant health management, and pest management, resistance management? I'd like to cite uh, Mr. Andrews that wrote this uh, very nice book. And um, he poses this question when he releases a book in, in 80, 1989. And he says, uh, what should be the focus, the approach, or scope of our work, and he said, without a doubt, to focus on social economic aspects. And he said that he said that only six percent of his book is fo focuses on social economic aspects. That is, we never study ourselves from the sociological standpoint. That is how we react for technology to be used or not. It's it's incredible how we see this small things that is educating, uh, training, sociology, uh, that is leaving aside biology, leaving aside all of the technical aspects. Why is it that we're not using technology appropriately or managing technology appropriately? So, so, so instead of uh, where are we heading, 
with pests. Where are we heading with agronomy? Uh, pests are not sent by God. That never happened. It was never like that. I mean, pests is just an anthropic issue or are created by human beings. So what are we doing as human beings to make pests arise? It's an anthropic question. For example, cockroach, why is it a, 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 a pest? It's, it's an anthropic concept. Why is trip uh, a, a pest? Because it affects um, our finances. So what is the agronomy we're developing? And then we'll see which pest can affect us. And so we'll be able to get a better answer instead of just fortune telling, just guessing. And the best thing we can do, I mean, as we look in these crystal balls, well, the serious fortune teller is based on, you know, um, solid, solid evidence like surveys, monitoring. You know, I do proper monitoring, monitoring, um, uh, conduct proper uh, surveying. So that, which is quite elementary, well, sometimes, you know, we don't do it as, uh, you know, well. So that is the message. Where are we heading in terms of pests? Well, based on our current management, we're heading to resistance. Uh, what's coming next? Well, I have to evaluate that uh, year after year, and that way we'll know. Thank you very much. Committee, Martin, David, Apresidel have um, well invited me to be here and share some ideas regarding, in this case, diseases. My presentation is focused on what are we doing to face diseases and the likelihood of having loss of um, resistance or resistance? When fungicides are applied, they eliminate the most sensitive pathogens, and as we increase application rate and use, the least sensitive individuals also increase and we thereby uh, leading to selection uh, agent. The appearance of resistance, even though is not an, a general issue today, such as, for example, the case of pests and some insects, it is a reality for our country, generally speaking, and it in, does not only affect farmers directly, but also uh, it's detrimental to the industry. Two seasons ago, a specific committee was put together, a FRAC, and this is based on the international committee in Europe. It is in Brazil, and now there is a committee in Argentina. This committee, as the definition says, is created to support joint work of the different groups in order to manage resistance to fungicides. This is made up of different companies that uh, do research, develop, um, health uh, care product uh, products. These are located in Casafe. These are Bass, Bayer, Dow, Mupont, 
and uh, Syngenta, Arista. All of these companies have a representative, and then the, we make up this um, committee with all of the companies that are in the uh, health um, chamber, plant chamber, that is called CASAFE. We are organized as follows. This, uh, we have, there are different uh, representatives, so we have different functions. Personally, I'm responsible, or the president of uh, FRAC Argentina, Julio Morey is the vice president, Gabriel Giusti, the treasurer, and Federico is the uh, coordinator. As every organization, we have a mission, and the mission is to um, suppress the appearance of resistance, uh, to provide different management tools to resistance in order to assure technological sustainability or sustainability of technologies. And we are also developing a web page, www.frac-argentina.org, because one of the main objectives is communication. Among the main objectives, well, communication, extension, education, I mean training, we also have institutional objectives to relate to other institutions that research um, on these uh, issues, either, um, you know, uh, governments or private sectors. There are specific objectives, too. Um, we are supporting and encouraging research um, together with universities, governmental agencies, to communicate on different uh, responsible use of fungicides and not only to achieve a delay in the resistance, but also achieve environmental sustainability. To do this, we need to identify the existing resistance problems or potential also existing problems to gather data and to work together with the industry and to recommend specific guidelines as well as Iraq or Aterrak. There is also a slogan we, that states we cannot avoid the evolution of resistance, but we can delay resistance. And this is our main goal. This is just an introduction so you could uh, you know, know about FRAC. Uh, you probably you probably didn't know it was already um, up and running. FRAC was up and running in Argentina. So knowing based on the issues with pests and uh, SENASA together with CASAFE, back in 2014, and they changed the resolution in terms of um, label identification used in health, uh, uh, plant health products. I think that is what is in bold is important. The rest is not. I mean, this is in terms of identification that involves includes not only the chemical group but also the action mechanism of the fungicide or insecticide or herbicide. So this um, information has to abide by HRAC, IDAM, and FRAC. So this label And this marking indicates the group, the group uh, numbers. In this case, is 11. Group three 
This is the, uh, the case for uh, fungicide, the trademark, and the numbers. You'll also see it in combination with uh, letters, for example, C3 and G1. This is how herbicides and insecticides are identified. So we are also migrating to this kind of um, marking because it's, uh, it's easier to understand. It's more user friendly. So as I was saying, the main objective is communication. Professionals and advisors oftentimes confuse mode of action and site and mechanism um, actions. It's very important to differentiate them. That's why I'm showing here different definitions to clarify this, um, these definitions so we can learn about them. The mode of action is refers to the whole process that um, ends with the death of the fungus. Uh, the mechanism or the site of action uh, refers to the biochemical site. There is a case, for example, with the triosols, one of the oldest um, fungicides to be used for 20 years that affects the membrane or the layer. That is the mode of action, but the site or the enzyme is to inhibit a specific enzyme that is demethylization. Why is this important? Uh, we'll see this on the next slide, but before this, there's another classification, which is um, to say that there are fungicides that only act on the, a single specific site, and these are single site fungicides, but there are multiple action fungicides. These are called multiple fungicides, multiple site fungicides. These modes of action, these are the different letters that I said before, that describe the process. To understand this better, this uh, table that is in the FRAC on FRAC website shows how they are divided and what you can see in red is the trisols that um, actuated on the membrane of the fungus. This is mode G. But there is uh, G1, G2, there's site G1, site G2, and G3. So Within mode G, there are different sites of action, different enzymes. So if we use a G1 and G2, we'll be rotating fungicides, actually. So it's very important to understand the difference between mode and site. And the same goes for those affecting breathing that are on the upper left side of the map. This is the mode, this is the whole process, but within breathing, uh, you get uh, site two, site three, as you can see, site two, site three, C3, and C2 have different sites of action, and if we use a C2 plus C3, we'll be rotating then, uh, we'll be rotating fungicides. <laughs> We're working on to, well, to come up with a, a local general recommendation, also specific recommendation for each crop and each fungicide. But just to exemplify, I'd like to show you, you know, the European recommendations by FRAC, for example, for cereals, for those, uh, well, G1, trisols. This is DMI. This is uh, what this site of action is defined. If we use trisols, then the recommendation is a mix or alternating uh, with different um, mechanism, uh, mechanism act of actions, uh, different application programs. We here apply uh, between two and three times. Uh, repetitive application of DMIs 
alone should not be used in the same cycle, particularly in high-risk fungus. I mean, there are some fungus that have high risk uh, of resistance. So uh, this is, you can see this, uh, for example, we should not use them for those high-risk uh, fungus. And not to use reduced doses because they contribute to accelerating um, um, populations that are least uh, sensitive to the fungus. We should follow the recommendations by of the manufacturer. And in the case of mixes, that is, if we mix two sites of action, we should follow the effective dosage and not um, mean doses to avoid um, healing applications. I mean, what I mean to say is that when the disease is advanced, and in Europe they are also recommending a specific um, application for barley. You know, the barley is... Uh, it's difficult to control, and there are some problems in Europe, so they're recommending the use of multisites in the uh, crop cycle. Another example of recommendations for, um, these are called SDHIs, this is the name of the enzymes, enzyme, and uh, QOI. I summarize this because uh, these are quite, I mean, recommendations are quite similar for both sites of action. And they state that um, they should be applied in a mix with uh, non resistant fungicides, and the partner of the mix should provide effective control of the disease because we say, okay, we're going to mix, but maybe it's not effective enough, so it's worthless. So the product that is used in the mix should also be effective. And to this, we, ne we need to test it um, alone and to see whether it is as effective as the mix. To apply a maximum of two sprays of uh, fungicides per cycle, maximum is two. And to apply it is an, in a, as preventatively as possible. There are some that are have a, have a higher healing potential, but uh, well, we should not abuse this because we're giving diseases a greater chance of, um, you know, becoming resistant with time. So and also not using reduced doses to see, well, to follow the applications, I mean, uh, the recommendations that appear on labels. In the case of intensive crops, for example, in Brazil for potato, grapes, I mean, these crops uh, are not particularly interested for this Congress, but, well, they use between eight to seven to eight do doses for um, well, the recommendation is not, not to use uh, more than three applications per cycle. If we, if we mix them, not more than 50% of those applications should contain QOI. If we use them alone, as uh, standalone products, we should not apply uh, over 33% of these products alone. For trisols, also preventive applications, and in healing applications also favor the, or lead to uh, um, no, the healing process. In Argentina, there are some fungi that we're working on where we see some problems in terms of loss of sensitivity. There's a, you know, there's a discussion in terms of how much uh, the, you know, the loss of sensitivity, for example, Sir Cospera Kikuchi, we know that is resistance to um, some um, 
um, products, but um, we're we're trying to determine the, whether there are some subspecies and the same for Cercopra sojina. And there's also some study on Corinespora cassicola, which is, uh, we can see loss of sensitivity. And we can see how each site of action uh, works for Facospora uh, Pacirci. These are all diseases that are being studied. For peanut, uh, Cercosporium personatum, we're also studying for um, barley. This is the case of Ramularia. There's also some studies going on there. And potato. Alternarius, Solani, and Alternada. FRAC has been um, developing, has developed two workshops or congresses. One uh, took place in October last year, the other one two months ago, where we meet with the different experts and discuss, um, well, uh, guidelines, uh, recommendations, we, tr we reach different consensus on resistance. Some conclusions of these uh, meetings are summarized in this slide, and many are aligned with the recommendations of the European uh, FRAC Committee. It's critical to have um, a disease management, an effective disease management program to delay the increase of resistant strains, strands, um, not using fungicides that have, uh, for example, a low or are not as if, as if, as effective, and fungicides that have a high risk or high risk fungicides tend to be used or must be used in complete doses, never low dose doses and also comply with the application um, scheme. Also uh, follow the manufacturer's uh, uh, instructions uh, to also check with the SANASA uh, register of products and also communicate. This is key to communicate the different mechanisms of actions the sites of actions, uh, how to combine them, how to alternate them with um, a lower risk fungicides. Another important component is manage resistant management is to evaluate control of diseases. Uh, that is, if there is a control issue, that should be reported as what they do in REM with PES to report and confirm whether they have to do with technology uh, issues, they are technology related or they are resistant problems. And the significance of monitor that is um, following the, the times of applications, prevention, following persistence of applications and the residual um, aspect. And but also contribute with uh, different resistant varieties, control of uh, host plants, the, um, <clears throat> and also the management of seeding, dates of seeding. This is important in terms of, in terms of disease management. All of this helps uh, together with the use of the fungicides. And above all, um, working on the application, uh, the quality of application. And um, in the next conferences, uh, we'll, we're aiming at involving the industry, researchers, consultants, um, farmers, so we can all reach an agreement in, uh, as to recommendations and guidelines that then will appear on the websites. Some restrictions that uh, we discuss in these workshops and conferences, um, Roberto also took part. 
Well, where the number of um, the modes of actions are restricted, uh, there are also four sides of action, so we have to live with that. And the least sensitive population of fungi are already being seen in the, on the farm, and there are some active ingredients that have low efficiency, um, I mean individually, and so we should also um, be careful about this. Before concluding, well, next September, the 5th and 6th of September, CASAFE is organizing the second National Congress on the use of physiosanitaries. And if you visit a CASAFE website, you'll be able to see the agenda for the Congress, which is quite important, that also will address uh, good agricultural practices. This will be all. Uh, David is already uh, writing down some questions, so we'll have some time for uh, this uh, Q&A session. Thank you very much. said before, you know, having this yellow light, uh, I mean, we can all already see resistance of fungicides, insecticides, um, everything you have said from Apricid will try to provide all of the tools we have in hand in order to find the solution to this problem. I have some questions, and the first question is, I mean, for both of you, how do you believe all of this new issue will impact which is the application of specific sites, the new technologies applied to treating a specific weed, I mean selective controls, how do you think this technology will impact on the generation or creation of resistance, both in insecticides and, and uh, fungicides? On my presentation I said that um, Sometimes we find the star product, the leading product, and we overuse that product, and we don't follow the good agricultural practices by doing this. I think that the use of a single site of action, despite being the most effective one, I mean abusing or overusing could pose a resistance issue in the future. So we should consider um, rotation, uh, management, and, and not depend on the, the leading or the star product, because there are many examples with fungicides in Brazil, uh, you know, using or overusing this uh, star product uh, three seasons after, then problems began to emerge. So I think we should consider rotation or multi sites. And there are these products. I mean, not this is probably not the case for pests. This is uh, will be more appropriate to fungus. I mean, uh, fungicides. And do you think, I mean, the selective application or implementation of herbicides, do you believe that this technology could could actually, you know, in the case of fungicides, is more preventive, uh, for example, imaging, um, data gathering, whether we could get something that can, you know, actually predict you know, to have to selective uh, control. I think that it will help, but not completely uh, solve the problem. 
it's, it's, it's not the Congress itself, but what's the problem with pests, for example, with the weeds, I mean? Why in the 80s we used um, the actives that use the products we're using today, and at that time there was this mechanism of action that was not resistance, that would, was knife. I mean, so today we're not using the, uh, the blade or the knife, and so even though we select, we become selective, we'll be able to mitigate the problem, but it, we will not solve it altogether. So, for example, in terms of pests, I could be, um, you know, speaking about pests for many hours, but, I mean, we'll not avoid it with shelter because it's a comprehensive approach. If I am a pest and I am populating and I see that there's 70% of the surface that is just a one element, the other 30%, the likelihood is, is really high, so I go there. So I ha need to have something more comprehensive that is how mitigating it. So one thing is mitigation and improving, uh, but not creating a false expectation with um, weeds. This, uh, this orientation is, is good, but not in terms of resistance. We have already, I think, I think there's uh, resistance to glyphosate and 4Ds. This is in Santa Fe. This is triple resistance. Uh, we saw this in the United States before, but we see it in Argentina already. So we have to see how we're going to mitigate that because that problem will not stop. So now you, I have another question. And the solution would be not only varying active principles of products, but we also have other tools. For example, uh, uh, service crops. And, and, and the question is, uh, how do you see, how do you think these service crops would impact on these uh, problems? And then I said service crops, I think it's, it's the right word, right? I'm an advocate for this, uh, for the term, but, but it, well, uh, cover crops, but service crops, I mean service is a better word. Um, in the case of f fungus, uh, well, the diseases are not controlled, so for some cases, they actually work as a bridge for the next crop. So um, it's, 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 um, I think that it should be taken into consideration. F these are new issues. I mean, uh, neither better nor worse. Plant health should be considered, you know, as a short blanket uh, thing, you know, where do you feel, want to feel cold, in your feet or in your chest? So if we see that uh, cover crops improve, then we should work on the problem. Uh, as I was asked once about uh, the Pampas region and Pisces was used as, um, I mean, was used uh, as a cover crop. And they said, okay, I'm not going to do any cover crops again. Well, I said, no, you continue using the cover crop, but deal with the problem. I think we should, you know, get, our, get, get down to work and, and, and think through. As uh, a professor said once, I think uh, he said that uh, the basis of the foundation should be to, well, actually use our, our, our minds and, 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 and our, our thinking uh, capabilities. When we think of end of cycle diseases, we knew that the presence of um, covers on the surface should bring more diseases, but um, we, we should 
you know, just just address the the end of cycle diseases. I think uh, critical thinking is required here, and well, to address new issues. I noticed that um, you you emphasized on the social economic aspect. I would like you to explain a little further. I mean, what did you mean exactly by this? I never quite understood. Some people, you know, when they advise, they just considered one threshold, and then when they did the work by themselves, then they consider another threshold. So, you know, social players and how we behave as social players. So shouldn't we, I mean, we should study society, but not isolated from the rest. For example, with the uh, environmentalists, some of them are quite, I mean, activists or extreme, but uh, sustainability management is very important, but not only production management. So we need to study society uh, so as to see how we're going to implement or apply technology. In 1970, when, when ryegrass was already resistant in Australia, so society was not uh, ready to see that problem. So I'm concerned. Iraq. You know, Iraq was put together and now it's too late because the pests are there. Okay. I go to frack. Why? I mean, there's no resistance. Why frack? So what is it? I mean, how we behave in terms of reactions. So when uh, there's an institution that wants to be, or program that wants to be preventive, then some people criticize that. So we should not only focus on the daily problems, but, also, but, but look forward uh, 10, 15 years, and even more. This is what I mean by studying society, how we behave, um, and the different uh, classes. I'm already 47, and this is not the same as a younger, the younger generations. So I need to consider all of this in order to be able to improve the, the system. This is what I meant by the social. Well, almost um, finishing this panel, Ricardo mentioned, uh, made an analogy with the weeds and rotation of active principles regarding fungus control, or fungus management. But the question is, uh, I think that uh, insecticides are following the same principles, right? Uh, particularly the case of bed bugs. Is that, is that right? Yes, exactly. Regarding bed bugs, uh, we are in a, a technological bottleneck. Uh, uh, for the case of worms, so we can rotate. If we don't rotate, it's because of financial issues, but not availability. But bed bugs, uh, the products, so there are only two modes of actions. And uh, pyrotrode, so if I need to rotate, what should I use to rotate? So the system does not allow me to rotate. So we should focus on that uh, in the future, right? Not, not for this season, but for the future. OK. Time is up, and I'd like to thank your presentations um, on behalf of APRACEED. We'll try to provide all the necessary tools. I think that your, your presentations have been beneficial to all of us. So thank you very much. Thank you all.